success. So actually, thank you for allowing me to be part of your uh, community. 100%. You're part of the uh, part of the reason why Mastering Diabetes gets such great success with our clients. There's no question. <laughs> now, today we wanted to focus a little bit on, on kidney health because uh, there's a lot of confusion about what foods, how foods influence kidney health. And uh, between the low carbohydrate world and the plant-based world, there's sort of a lot of, uh, you know, there's, there's conflict and there's, there's a lack of consensus about what is actually the best way to improve kidney health over time or to reverse an ailing kidney. So many people living with diabetes, regardless of the type, are also diagnosed with kidney disease at some point in their evolution, um, or they're afraid of developing kidney disease because they've heard about it and it's impacted somebody that they know and love. Can you tell us a little bit more about how insulin resistance and kidney health are related? Sure. So some of the things that, you know, as a, a primary care physician, and we get, you know, we're the kind of the, the first ones in the trenches, so to speak. We're on the front line of diabetic um, management and health. So one of the things that we're always taught is to keep an eye on that kidney health. So what we'll be looking for is are they spilling protein into the urine are they, um, you know, escalating in their creatinine, which is a, a blood measurement of kidney health? So some of the things you got to understand about the kidney, it's a filtering system, right? So you have these little tiny little filtering systems called glomeruli. And so think of them as little daisies. So we want, you know, for example, if I have someone with high blood pressure and the blood pressure is really strong, it can obliterate these little filtering systems. And what can happen over time is you can start spilling protein into the urine. So that's one of the things that we look for because diabetics can also damage the kidneys. And nephrologists will tell you that you will want to eat a lower animal protein diet um, to preserve your kidney health. So, you know, insulin resistance, you know, it's the first stages as we move into prediabetes and diabetes. These are the things that we worry about is certainly kidney health because, you know, the folks that are on dialysis where they actually have to use machines to do the kidney functions the number one cause of that is diabetes. And so we, what we want to do is put you in a position to where you don't have to worry about diabetes or your kidney health, and that's by eating plants. Can you go into a little more detail here about how a person would know that something is going wrong with their kidney? Like what symptoms would they experience? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit interesting. Um, you don't really at least the patients that I've worked with over the last 15, 20 years, they don't really see a matter of like a feeling. They don't have back pain. It's not a painful experience. What they would see is that their blood work that they're getting regularly, they're starting to see some changes in some of those um, parameters that we're looking and measuring, the creatinine and then the um, protein in the urine. So those would be the things that we look for. Um, you may see that you have bladder infections more frequently. For example, um, a family member has, a very close family member has had a kidney transplant. Um, gosh, it's been t over 20 years now. And when she sticks to a plant-based diet, she does really well. <laughs> Her kidney function is doing very, very well. There's less of a concern that she's going to have to require another kidney transplant. Um, but when we fall off the diet, we can see some changes in her kidney function. And that goes along with my other patients as well. But the, the main thing is it's not something that they, there's not a sign. It's not like when you first develop diabetes and maybe someone gets where they have to pee a lot or, you know, they have rapid weight loss and they feel very fatigued. Um, it's something that needs to be monitored. So it's really important that one, that you go to a physician who knows the guidelines to be checking that and to ask for that. And then also ask, what are my results? How do they compare to last year? Because, you know, the best defense is a good offense. And that's part of that is being educated about your own health and where you're currently, currently at. Okay, so one of the things that you've mentioned multiple times here is uh, is protein leakage, and using that as an indicator of protein. I'm sorry, of kidney health. So, could you go into a little bit of detail here about why protein? Why is it that doctors are monitoring the ability of your kidney to actually filter protein and using that as a surrogate of of kidney function when your kidneys are in reality uh, filtering uh, thousands of metabolites 24 hours a day? Sure, absolutely. So. Remember, the, the kidney has those small filtering systems, which I had mentioned before, the like little colanders. And as the blood flows through, I mean, the kidneys are working really hard because, you know, 
every time that heart contracts, it's, it's filtering some more blood, more blood. And those little colanders should be able, the hole shouldn't be big enough to let protein leak through. So the reason that we look for protein in the urine is because it shouldn't be there. So when we find it there, we know there's been some stress to the kidney and there's been damage to those little filtering systems. So those are one of the key indicators and that's called microalbumin. You'll get a test. You should have that done at least done once a year as a diabetic. Um, and then if you find that it's high, then you'll need to be seen by a nephrologist. And it's unfortunate because, you know, one in eight humans or especially Americans suffer from chronic kidney disease and many of them don't even know they have it. What's the standard treatment? Once this is happening, once this is progressing, what, what medications are used? How does that go? Yeah, so what we're looking for, what you'll see as diabetics, um, the, the kind of, you get a, a slurry of prescriptions. <laughs> so you'll get your metformin is typically one of the first ones you'll get, but you also get what we call ACE inhibitors, something like lisinopril, that may sound familiar, or Losartan, it's an ARB, if, someone, if you know if the, the ACE inhibitors cause you to cough. And those are being a uh, protective measure. And they're usually prescribed at a lower dose, even though someone, they're high blood pressure medications, even though let's say our diabetic maybe doesn't have high blood pressure, at least according to the, the current guidelines of high blood pressure, um, that's meant to be a protective measure. Um, and there's some, the physiology of that, it can be a trip, but first thing is typically um, medication. There's not much education in my experience that goes on as far as like, hey, we need to really worry about your kidney health other than controlling your blood sugars. And of course, we know how uh, the standard medical practice goes with that is just, you know, don't eat the carbs and try to keep the sugars under control with your medications. That doesn't really help our kidney health in the long term. Okay, so you just, that was the perfect segue to my next question here because most <laughs> people living with, with any form of diabetes, uh, they're either, they're influenced into eating a low carbohydrate diet because they believe that if they were to eat carbohydrate, then the glucose would go up. So as a result of that, they eat more meat, they eat more dairy products, they eat more eggs, they eat more fish, which are all technically low carbohydrate foods, but they're also higher protein foods. So by eating a low carbohydrate diet, de facto, they're eating more protein. What does that do to their kidney health over the course of time? That stresses the kidneys even further, right? So here we, it's kind of like beating our head against the wall and expecting the headache to go away, right? So we're, it's, you know, you're pounding your, your kidneys um, unknowingly, because a lot of people don't understand that the high protein is, is harsh on the kidney health, um, in hopes to lower the blood sugars, in hopes to prevent everything else, but it just makes everything worse. So that's the unfortunate thing. It's almost like watching a comedy, right? So we understand that a whole food plant-based diet can certainly reverse many cases of the type 2 diabetes and get your type 1 diabetes under very good control with you know, the, the least amount of insulin required. But the frustrating part as a physician is that you'll see patients who have all these issues, including you know, their chronic kidney disease, and someone's telling them to eat low carb in order to, you know, I call it the glucose, the smoke, right? The fire is the insulin resistance, and it's just the glucose is just the smoke, and they're just wafting with different medications. But if we could just put out the fire, which is eating a whole food plant-based diet, everything else gets better. That's just the frustrating part. It's, it's extremely sometimes difficult to help people understand there's a different way because they're so entrenched in the regular medicine and what they've been told by multiple doctors.